It is known by many names, replied the little man. In Africa, it is called Daga. In China, it is known as Ma. The Arabs call it Kunubu. But in this part of the world, it is best known as Hemp. Hemp? shouted the mayor in surprise. Hemp? cried the villagers in dismay. We know that plant, spat the mayor in disgust. We hate that plant, cried the villagers in anger. That is a plant we officially hate. Just hearing its name makes us all quite irate. That plant used to grow all over this town. Everywhere you look, it sprang from the ground. It's true that this plant has a few paltry uses, but it also contains some most dangerous juices. That plant has the world's most terrible flowers. They can make moments seem as if they're lasting for hours. This plant improves music and heightens the senses, thus bypassing all of your spirit's defenses. Even if you just use them so you can unwind, these flowers still put some strange thoughts in your mind. This is the plant that corrupted our youth. When they used it, they questioned our version of truth. We told them to drink booze instead of to toke. They laughed at us as if it was all just a joke. They started to think instead of obey. So we banished this plant far, far away. Your suggestion to start growing hemp is outrageous. We would never allow this bad plant to save us. We will never use this plant. Be gone, be gone. You must recant. I tell you again in full truth, this plant will solve all your problems, said the little man firmly. You have replied with nothing but ignorance and bigotry. I fulfilled my side of the bargain, and now I demand payment. We will pay you nothing but a cell in our prison, replied the mayor. We have laws against hemp in our town. Possessing even the seeds of this plant is forbidden. And so today, you have become a criminal. The villagers seized the little man, and they threw him into prison. Then they took away the barrel of hemp seed, and they burned it in the village square. Oh ho, said the little man, sitting in his prison cell. So this is the way it must be? Very well, then. Now you shall see what I can do. So saying, the little man placed some fragrant hemp flowers into his shimmering glass water pipe. He lit a match and inhaled, drawing the smoke deeply into his lungs. In an instant, his eyes became red, as red as an open-faced cherry pie. As the pie piped his pipe, something strange began to happen. The gurgling and burbling of the water began to sound as loud as a crashing wave, and great clouds of swirling smoke came out of the bomb. The clouds spread over the whole village, covering every garden, filling every home, sliding into every nook and cranny, slipping into every crack and crevice. Soon, every single villager had breathed in the pie-eyed piper's smoke, and they all felt their minds opening to new thoughts and new ideas. Yet although every person was touched, each was affected in a different way. Some of the villagers cried out and wept openly, while others wished only to be left alone with their new thoughts. Some laughed and sang and danced, while others began jotting down new inventions on crinkled pieces of paper. Some pulled their lovers close, while others began playing games with their children. Some began to play music, while others looked to the sky in wonder. Many of the sick felt improved and began to eat, while the elderly smiled and felt their aches ease. Then the pie-eyed piper piped upon his shimmering glass water pipe a second time, and a second great wave of clouds rolled through the village. Some of the villagers raised their heads as this second smoke touched them. The most creative, the most musical, the most clever, the most wise, 
all stood as if heeding a secret call, and then they followed the smoke to its source. They came for the pie-eyed piper, and they freed him from his prison cell. The guards did not even try to stop them, for they were lost in dreams of jails without doors. The pie-eyed piper piped upon his simmering glass water pipe a third time, and more clouds issued forth, now filling the village with a fog so thick that none could see their hand in front of their face. The smoke swirled and then curled, and then stretched out like an arm, forming a trail that led away from the village. The piper cried out to the smoke-inspired crowd, Come, friends, let us follow the sweet-smelling cloud. They filled the whole length of the road, all of the best and the brightest of Petrolia. They walked and danced and laughed and skipped, their minds filled with the piper's smoke and reeling with visions of a better future. Stop, cried the mayor, shaking off his stupor. You can't leave us, cried the many mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters who were being left behind, lost in the fog from the piper's pipe. But their cries were ignored, for the pie-eyed piper and the chosen villagers followed the smoke trail out of the village and far, far away. In this new place, the pie-eyed piper and those who had followed him planted the seeds of hemp. Then they built themselves a new village out of the hemp, and soon they were living even more comfortably than they were before. So they called their new village Hempton. As the Lake of Goo grew smaller and smaller, the remaining inhabitants of Petrolia had to make do with less and less. As life became harder, the people of Petrolia began to leave their village. In ones and twos, in the dead of night, or other times when none were watching, they followed the piper's trail to the new village. When the Lake of Goo had finally been reduced to a puddle, the mayor himself slipped away to live in Hampton, and Petrolia was no more. Once upon a time, there was a happy little town called Hampton. The people of Hampton were well fed and well dressed because their town was blessed with a great field of fragrant green hemp. Well, the hemp must have been magical because the people of the village were able to fashion it into all sorts of wonderful things. Using simple machines, the hemp was easily transformed into useful substances of all shapes and colors, including food, fuel, fiber, plastics, and medicine. Most of the villagers were employed in the hemp industry, and every aspect of their lives was intertwined with the hemp. The pie-eyed piper was elected mayor, and he sat on the roof of the tallest building, piping the hemp flowers within his shimmering glass water pipe, filling the streets with the fragrant smoke which inspired and guided the villagers, as well as healing the sick, comforting the elderly, and bringing peace and prosperity to all. The End